Okay, there you go. Right, do your best. Okay, this is a quick overview of Irish history. Just a quick overview. Okay, so the Celtic people arrive in Ireland as the Aboriginal people are probably about 4,000 years before Christ. Okay, how do we know this? Because New Grange was constructed 3,500 years before Christ. And, uh, I don't want to draw on New Grange. Just Google it, okay? I'll write it down for you. Okay? And it's a beautiful structure and it's a calendar basically and it shows the rising of the solstice sun in winter. And this is how we formulate time. We're starting to formulate time for growing patterns and stuff like that, okay? So Jesus is then born, but the Christian religion begins not with the birth of Christ, but with the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's what proves is divine, and that's where the religion starts. Okay? And Christianity is a paradigm shifter. It's a, it elevates the human condition away from the inhumanity and the depravity of the pre-Christian tradition. Okay? Pre-Christian pre traditions like human sacrifice, Okay, I've got to placate the gods. I think I'll kill my daughter. Great job. Great job. Did it work? No, but, you know, I thought that was the right thing to do. Christianity turns up and says, look, just treat everybody with love and kindness. So, it arrives 400 years after Christ. And it's not Roman Catholic as such. It has elements of Roman Catholicism in terms of the order of the mass, but the culture of the Celtic church before the arrival of the Norman French in 1168. The culture of the Celtic church is a lot more laid back. You know, the priests are allowed to get married. I think women have the same status as men. Monks and nuns have the same status. And this heralds the Irish Golden Age. So this is why it's important that I'm not English British, but I'm Irish British. I'm a British citizen, I was born in Manchester, but my outlook and my thinking is hopefully formulated by you know understanding of my Gaelic history and culture. Okay. So we had slavery up until Christianity, you know, they used to go over to Wales and steal people and God knows what else they used to do to them, you can imagine, you know. And Christianity arrives and pretty much overnight, in a couple of years, everybody becomes a Christian through consent, not through conformity. They become Christians because they think it's a good idea, you know? Chris, you know, the Irish society at this time is hierarchical, okay? But I don't think it's as steep hierarchical as the English tradition, okay? But it is hierarchical. I suppose it's based on seniority and ownership of cattle, okay? The more cattle you've got, the more power you've got. And these patterns still exist today, okay? The more cars you've got, the more power you've got, okay? Is it right? Is it wrong? Right? It is what it is, okay? 1066, the Norman French defeat Harold at the Battle of Hastings. Okay? The English are Nordic, by the way. They're Danish. They're not the same as the French Celts, okay? They're not the same as the Norman French, who have some Nordic blood in them, but mainly the main body of the army is French Celtic, okay? And the French go to work on the English in a big way. They, like, genocide the north of England. There's, like, 100,000 people get murdered by the French invading army. I mean, the, the French Celts' treatment of the English is, is it's an unwritten history. Even the English don't know about it. The harrowing of the north, they call it. And I've only just found, about, found out about it myself recently. Such is the English character not to talk about things like that. You know, the English character don't really like boasting about things they've done good. And they don't really like talking about their suffering. They're quite stiff and lip. It's kind of a characteristic the English have got, right? But on a historical level, we need to look at what the uh, Norman French did to the English. They set up a feudal system, which is a pyramid. The king at the top. Yeah, sure, there was a pyramid system there before, but it was a lot flatter. Okay, And it was also indigenous, right? At this point, you know, Harold was English, okay, he was speaking the Danish language, and these French turn up with a superior technology, a superior military technology, a superior outlook, 
and begin to dominate them. And that sort of repression is kind of still underneath the surface some way in English society, I think. Um, I can talk about that later, okay? But really, it only, it's only kind of dawned on me since... Um, can you just join me? Because I want this is for you, right? It's only dawned on me since coming to this country, which has got an anti-racist paradigm, okay? Right. China is, you know, it's non-Western, and so therefore ideas are held up for analysis. Hey, Rain, come over here, darling. Come over here. Right. Now, the French Normans then invade Ireland, but they don't invade all of it. They, only raid, they invade about, I think, about 40% of the country, but the, the character of the invasion is quite different. The French and the Irish are ethnically related, so, you know, no problem. They marry us, and they eventually they become one of us. Okay? You know? That's it. It's, they assimilate into Irish society quite peacefully. Whereas in England, they dominate the English, murder them, repress them. And it's a bit like the Japanese treatment of the Chinese, okay? And that was going on for a long time, let me tell you, maybe 60 or 70 years. A sort of terrible war was going on against the English by the Norman French. Horrendous. By the way, I'm Norman French descent. My mum's a Joyce. We come from Norman French stock, right? But Irish now. We've been there for a thousand years, right? But my dad's side, an old Gaelic name, E, right? McGee, means son of the people of the fire. Now, so the Normans bring Roman Catholicism, which completely revolutionises the Celtic Church. Now, the uh, priests are not allowed to get married, they have to be celibate because the church is a business, it's a monetarist driven organisation, it's a corporation which, which presents itself as holy. In contradiction of the words of Jesus Christ himself, do not call anything holy, only God is holy. How can you call a human organisation holy? Exactly, right? So it's rent with loads of inherent contradictions. This, these contradictions and the corruption that's inherent in the Catholic Church leads to a Protestant revolution in around about 1509 by a guy called Luther and that starts the Protestant schism okay but that's another story now at the end of the golden age which is really not it doesn't really end with the Norman French invasion remember their assimilation is fairly peaceful right but Gaelic culture has changed we have our own legal system we've got our own church we have our own way of looking at things we've got our own culture for example, if I had a son, it would be normal for me to give my son to my, my sister, you know? And the son would be brought up by my sister. You know, these traditions and cultures were starting to be homogenised by integration into the wider European idea of the Roman Catholic Church, okay? So, the, the, golden, age, the golden Age, you could say, ends at the, end, at, the, at, the end, at the start of the 12th century, right? But it's still pretty cool, okay? The French are okay with us, and we're okay with them, okay? 1460, we declare ourselves independent. And the English, hungry for resources, invade us, because 